One, two, three, hit it. The rules for domestic visually impaired cricket are based on the traditional sighted laws of cricket, with a few alterations to make it accessible to blind and partially sighted players. Right now, pull heads or toes. The team is made up of 11 players. From that team, you have to have three B1 players. You then have another sight category called low partial. This is someone who would really struggle to see the ball, but would have more sight than a B1 player. You would usually have one low partial player, and the seven remaining players would be partially sighted, creating your 11. In terms of batting, a B1 batsman receives double runs and would always have a runner. A B1 batsman also gets one life for LBWs. So, if judged to be struck in line once, then they would effectively be half out. A second strike in line, then they would be fully out. For obvious reasons, B1s can't be stumped. If the batsman can't see the line, it's considered poor cricket to claim for the stumping. For all other players, the rules are exactly the same as in red ball cricket. In terms of fielding, a fielder who is totally blind can take a catch after the ball has bounced once. This means that your B1 players tend to field very close in order to take advantage of the one bounce rule. All the other players must take the ball on the full for it to be a legitimate catch, as in regular cricket. When bowling, the bowler must ask the batsman if he's ready before beginning his run-up and shout play as he releases the ball. The B1 can use any one-armed action, so there's no two-handed bowling. Partially sighted bowlers use the same one-armed action as in regular cricket. There are a couple of rules in terms of the actual delivery. For a blind batsman, the ball must bounce at least twice before reaching the crease, but must not be rolling, otherwise it will be classed as a no ball. For partially sighted batsmen, the ball must bounce at least once before reaching the crease, so any full toss would again be a no ball.